Chapter 9. Chapter 9 starts off the record of the Xenophytes ruled by Zenith, Noah, and then Limhi. This is Mormon's abridgment of the original plates that had the history of the people of Zenith from the time that they left Zarahemla until they were delivered out of the hands of the Lamanites. In the first 10 chapters of this record, Zenith is the main speaker telling the story of his people. Verse number 1. I, Zenith, having been taught all the lang in all the languages of the, of the Nephites and having had a knowledge of the land of Nephi, all the land of our father's first inheritance, and having been sent as a spy among the Lamanites that I might spy out their forces, that our army might come upon them and destroy them. But when I saw that which was good amongst them, I was desirous that they should not be destroyed. On the first expedition from Zarahemla to the land of Nephi, Zenith was sent in to spy among the Lamanites to understand how strong they were, to see if their army could be defeated by the group that had come up from Zarahemla. But when Zenith went and lived among them, he realized that many of the Lamanites were actually good people and he didn't feel right going to war with them or destroying them. Instead, we see in verse 2 that he spoke to the others in the group who were waiting in the wilderness saying, it's better we go into a peace treaty with them, finding a way for us all to live together. But the ruler of the group was a bloodthirsty man who got angry with Zenith for saying this and sought to kill him for his words. The members of the group fought against each other and all but 50 of them were killed. And then Zenith led these people back to the land of Zarahemla. In verse number three, Zenith says that because he was so keen to go back and live on the land of their ancestors in the land of Nephi, he gathered a bunch of people together again and he went up again through the wilderness. Because they as a people did not turn to God, they suffered a lot with famine and other troubles. They did not look for God's guidance. In verse number four, he says that after many days of wandering in the wilderness, they reached a point where the earlier group had fought with each other near the land of Nephi. You could see what happens when we don't turn to the Lord, when we don't ask for guidance, we don't humble ourselves and pray and ask for guidance on what we need to do next, to ask for a way forward, for ask for his help going forward. That's exactly what the Xenophytes did. They thought that they knew everything. They knew how they where to go and how they could get there. And they didn't bother in their pride to ask God for help. And as a result, they wandered and wandered and wandered for a long time lost. Verse number five, and it came to pass that I went again with four of my men into the city in unto the king that I might know the, of the disposition of the king and that I might know if I might go in with my people and possess the land in peace. And then this time Zenith took four of his men and went back into the city. But this time he went to meet King Laman to see if they would be allowed to live in the land in peace. Verse number six, and I went in unto the king and he covenanted with me that I might possess the land of Lehi Nephi and the land of Shiloh. Zenith met King Laman, who covenanted with him and agreed that they could take the land of Lehi Nephi and the land of Shilom and live there. We see here that the original city of Nephi has been given a new name, Lehi Nephi, and the lands of Lehi Nephi and Shilom were the lands that surrounded the city. In verse number 7, Zenith tells us that King Laman told his own people to evacuate the land so that the Xenophytes could move in there, and then Zenith and his people went in and took it over. In verse number 8, Zenith tells us that the city was not in good shape, the buildings and the walls needed repair and the Xenophytes set to work to fix it up. In verse number 9, Zenith shares that how his people started to nurture, to till, to prepare the land, to sow seeds of corn, wheat and barley and fruits and much more. And as their hard work began to show results, they began to prosper and grow in the land. Verse number 10, And now it was the cunning and the craftiness of King Laman to bring my people into bondage, that he yielded up the land that we may possess it. Zenith shares in verse number 10 that King Laman had been cunning and likely planned all this from the beginning to allow the Xenophytes to settle on the land, plant crops and do well so that he could benefit from it later. He continues in verse number 11 that after 12 years, King Laman, seeing how much the people of Zenith had grown and how prosperous they were, got worried that the Xenophytes would eventually overthrow the Lamanites. The Lamanites were a lazy people at that time. They didn't want to work themselves, but instead were looking for other people to work for them so that they could enjoy the rewards. Zenith says in verse number 12 that the Lamanites wanted to enslave his people so that they could enjoy the rewards of the Xenophytes' hard work. In verse number 13, he said that King Laman had started creating arguments and contentions among his people, encouraging them to start fighting with the Xenophytes. And this started off the fighting in the land between both the tribes again. Verse number 14, for in the 13th year of my reign in the land of Nephi, away on the south of the land of Shilom, 
where my people were watering and feeding their flocks and tilling their lands, a numerous hope of Lamanites came upon them and began to slay them and to take their flocks in the corner of their fields. In verse number 14, Zinefrek had said in the 30th year of his rule, a large gathering of Lamanites attacked his people who were peacefully feeding their flocks and taking care of their crops, killing many and taking away their animals and their corn that they had grown. And as many of Zenith's people could escape, ran into the city and called him to help them. In verse number 16, Zenith says that he armed the people with whatever he could give them, with bows and arrows and swords and scimitars and slings, and his people went out to fight the Lamanites. Verse number 17, Yea, in the strength of the Lord did we go forth into battle against the Lamanites, for I and my people did cry mightily to the Lord that he would deliver us out of the hands of our enemies, for we were awakened to a remembrance of the deliverance of our fathers. As Zenith and his people prepared to go out to battle, they remembered how the Lord had delivered and saved their forefathers earlier, and they cried out to the Lord, asking for help, asking for support, asking for protection and for deliverance. Verse number 18, And God did hear our cries and did answer our prayers, and we did go forth in his might. Yea, we did go forth against the Lamanites, and in one day and a night we did slay 3,043. We did slay them even until we had driven them out of our land. Zenith says that the Lord answered their prayers. He came to their help and he helped them overcome and kill the Lamanites and drive them back out of their land. In verse number 19, Zenith says that he himself helped his people bury their dead and there were 279 of their people who had been killed in the fight.